Hello Brave Gamers, welcome to my little guide video for Brave Default 2, the gambler job. In this video I'm gonna show you how you can unlock the gambler, and along the way I'm also gonna give you some tips for the boss fight that is tied to this quest. To unlock this quest you first have to acquire the Beastmaster Asterisk. After this you can go to the Savalon Gambling Hall, which is this building right here. And you want to talk to Shirley, who is this racy red hat Scottish woman over here. Who also happens to be wearing the Gambler Asterisk, as you can see. And Shirley is basically going to send you on a quest, where you have to fight multiple C-rank BND NPCs, win against them, and once you're done with that, you can fight BND against Shirley herself. And after that BND battle against Shirley, there will also be an asterisk boss battle against her right after. Now that you know how to unlock the gambler job, I would like to give you some tips how to get there. So first of all, what I really recommend you to do is to fight every single BND NPC in the first three cities, or at least every city you have access to at that point and get all of their cards. Now this sounds like a lot more work than it actually is. It does not take that long and it is also very easy. Uh, the NPCs on rank C and B are all, in my opinion, very easy to play against. But there is one thing that you have to keep in mind when you fight these NPCs and that is their rule set. If you fight someone who has the no keepsies rule active, then you can lose as many times as you want, you're not gonna lose any cards from it. But if you see that they do not have this rule active, you do definitely want to save your game before you fight them, because if you lose, you're gonna lose cards. And you do not want that to happen, because you worked hard for them. The same later happens when you fight against Shirley, by the way, because Shirley also does not have the no keeps his rule active. Another thing that I want to give you on your way is just to farm points for cards. You can just keep fighting the same NPC over and over again. What I did, I just fought the same rank C NPC in the gambling hall over and over again until I got a lot of points. And then I went and fought other NPCs again that I noticed had some good cards, but at that point I didn't have enough points to get them. I fought them again, won against them, and got the good cards from them. And as for fighting Shirley, um, my deck recommendations, I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. But you do not need super tremendously good cards. There is just one card that I really recommend you to get, and that is Horton, because Fortify Position is a very strong effect to use against Shirley. But yeah, other than that, just walk around, play some BND against NPCs, get some cards, and you should be ready to go. I do not recommend you to fight Shirley with the starting deck, because the starting deck is really weak, and the Gambler card is, in my opinion, not good at all. It's too much RNG for a game that has already RNG involved. Um, I do not recommend you to play with a Gambler card against Shirley. One more thing, if you feel like you have to replay the tutorial for the basics, you can do that by talking to the bartender here in the gambling hall anytime. Well, ready to play keepsies for asterisks? I'm ready. Let's do this. Oh, fancy your chances, do ya? Right oh, do your worst. Now let's take a look at the deck that I used against Shirley here. You will see that I have a lot of rare cards, but you can get them very easily from the NPCs in Halcyon, Savalon, and any other city really. But there's one card here that is very important and very useful that I recommend you to get, and that is Horton. The fortified position effect, it will be super useful, not only against Shirley, but in general against any opponent that you fight in my opinion. This card is overpowered. 
And I also use against Shirley a permanent effect card, in this case Anna Hall, just to counter her own permanent effect, as you will see in a moment. That's it for the deck, let's start the fight. If it's your turn first, or if you have to start first, I recommend you to place your weakest monster card. You want to place it always somewhere near a corner or in a way that your squares cover a corner. Because corners are, so far from what I've seen, the most useful starting position in BND. And now it's Shirley's turn and she's going to use her permanent effect card, which will boost her own cards, humanoid and spirit cards. So to counter that, just use your own permanent effect card. It will override hers. As you can see, she does not like this. And now she's going to place a monster card. Triple horizontal. Uh, she neutralized one of my squares. But as you can see, there is a flanking opening there. Um, I tried different things here to see which squares would align the best. But in the end, I just went with my golden bear. Because I saw it to be the most efficient. And then it's Shirley's turn again, she neutralized one of my squares and took some. And here I decided to use Horton, I'd rather use him early on when the field is still pretty open and I have a lot of room for neutralization. And here you can see Horton's effect in full bloom, it's really fucking awesome, I love it. And another thing that you notice here is that there is a lot of room for diagonal neutralization or diagonal flanking. So bringing one or two diagonal cards is really useful in this fight, as it seems. Uh, now this was my first time fighting her, so perhaps I just got lucky with the RNG of her positioning, but the two diagonal cards that I had really delivered the victory home to me. And here's my last card positioning, the wolf diagonal again. I took three squares and flanked a lot of hers, it's perfect. And her final card is the Gambler. It's pure RNG and honestly, if you're already in the lead at this point, I highly doubt that you will lose against her final Gambler card. It's just very unlikely if you're already in the lead. And here's basically just a quick overview of what cards that you can win from her. The Gambler itself, which you probably already have. Shirley, which you probably already have too. And then a bunch of monster cards. Um, and that's the Shirley fight. No. No! We win. Come on, you know the deal. Hand over the asterisk. Dirty rotten cheats! Eh? Huh? What do you mean? I mean exactly what I say. There's no way you lot should be beating the likes of me. Hey, but no one can win all the time, right? Isn't that what gambling's all about? Oh yeah, rub it in, why don't you? Cheeky little sod. I'll teach you. Boys! Take care of this little lot for me, and I'll forget what you owe, all right? Very well. Please, you must not take this personally. Orpheus, not you too. Don't hate the player, guys. Hate the game. I have debts to pay. Done with drama, huh? Yeah, right. Hey, you're the ones who stole my gift. If you're looking to blame someone, maybe try looking a little closer to home? Shut it, you. These lot are getting clobbered, and I'm having their asterisks. Let's get down to business, shall we? My old man were high-born, you know. Rich as you like, until he was swindled out of his fortune. After that, Mam left, and Dad died of heartbreak. An experience like that teaches a girl that people value one thing, and one thing only. Money. Pure and simple. Let me see. Alright, and we made it to the asterisk fight, which happens immediately afterwards. So remember, you cannot save in between these two battles. 
you have only one chance at defeating her in both of the battles. And I was really overpowered when I did this fight. My character levels were way too high and their gear was way better than I would assume that of the most players is who do it at this stage of the game. But yeah, this fight is not very difficult in my opinion, even if you're not overleveled or overgeared. Uh, what I recommend you to do is to take out the two um, little adds or minions here, the henchman and the swordsman. And then I would recommend you to focus on Orpheus because he's the buffer or the supporter. And then at last focus on Shirley herself, because Shirley is, in my opinion, not incredibly strong. Yes, she does have the uh, elemental gambling wheel or whatever it's called, uh, but it is very unlikely for her to get really lucky numbers there. Because, you know, that's the charm of the gambler. Not only you have to bother with the RNG of the job, but also Shirley herself. you anything you like clothes jewels the lot and with your asterisks I'll be able to make myself a pretty penny more than enough to buy me a lifetime of happiness now come on hurry up and die you're right Really? We beat you at B&D, now we beat you in a fight. 
What are you hoping to lose at next? Shut it, you. You'll not be so full of yourself next time. Why does there have to be a next time? Why does everything have to be a competition with you? Aye, if we've no reason to take you on, which we don't now, why would we? <laughs> hey, um, about that money I owe you. Oh, leave me be! Honestly, you're all as bad as one another. I'll teach the lot of you one of these days. Hey, wait! Does this mean we're quits, or...? Ha! Told you there was something fishy about her. Aye, well, that's what gambling's all about, eh? The thrill of the unknown. Ha-ha! <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> well, at least we have another asterisk. Um, I was wondering, now that that's all dealt with, would anyone like a game of B&D? Huh? I'm reasonably certain I understand the rules now. And, well, I did go to all the trouble of acquiring these cards. Whoa! Where the heck did you get those? I'd give my right arm for... Uh, sure, Gloria. I'd love to play, but, uh, maybe some other time, okay? Oh, what a shame. I was so looking forward to trying my hand. I never even knew she played. Well, me neither. But if she can bluff like that, she'll be an important and a half. Gloria, too? Ugh, just my luck. Now, at the end of the video, I'd like to show you the skills of the job real quick. And as you can see, it is all very RNG heavy. A lot of randomness is involved. It doesn't seem very practical to me to fight against story bosses. It seems to be more of a job that you would pick just for funsies on the site. But it does have a very useful passive that increases the amount of money that you gain from every battle. Um, you can even put it on each of your characters to accumulate the amount of money that you get even further. Which is pretty nice to have. But overall this job is definitely more of a job that you would pick just for fun other than for efficiency. And of course, <laughs> you need a deep wallet. Everyone who has ever played Devil May Cry 5, this right here is your Faust hat job. <laughs> it's pretty much the same shit.
And here, last but not least, I'll show you how the gamble looks on each of the characters. Alright, that's it with the video. I hope it was helpful for you guys. Thank you for watching and good luck!